So I struggled with this for years. Years and years and years. Food, I was obsessed with eating, and not just eating, but restricting my food, and both gave me such a buzz. I was high when I was eating, and I felt high when I was planning a diet, or I was losing weight and restricting my food, I felt so good about it. Oh, it's a double-edged sword, that one. I had no emotional attachment to food whatsoever early in my childhood. I was a happy kid, I had really good friendships, I cared a lot about school, I took a lot of pride in that. But then at seven, I was moved to France. I didn't speak the language, and I had no friends, really. But I did find food. And I say this with the hindsight of an adult because I had no idea that this was going on at the time, but I was lonely and food was there. You know, chocolate and sweets, I started stealing food, hiding food, and I just thought I really, really liked chocolate. I didn't understand that something really fundamental was missing from my life and I was trying to replace it with food. After really not that much time, a year and a half, we came back from France, back to England. But by this point, I wasn't really sure how to bond with people, bond with my peers. And so my relationships with friends remained unsatisfactory. Now, not just because I felt lonely, probably, but this didn't do an awful lot of good for my self-esteem. And so the kind of comfort eating, for lack of a better term, persisted. But then something really catastrophic happened that really sped up this, uh, or escalated this issue for me. I became body aware. Now I was a healthy weight, but I remember saying to my mum when I was 11, mum, if I still feel this way when I'm 12, on my 12th birthday, I'm gonna go on a diet. And sure enough, my 12th birthday came around and I went on a diet, which for me meant meal skipping. And I got hungry. I got really hungry and I would get really hungry in the day and I would come home and I would not binge eat at that time that hadn't started yet but I would start I would eat loads and loads of snacks which didn't do an awful lot of good for this identity I'd started to build for myself labeling myself as some sort of food addict with very little willpower it very much seemed to me that the issue was comfort eating or that I just liked chocolate too much now, I would get a buzz when I was trying to lose weight and I'd get a buzz when I was eating, when I'd fail and fall off and this cycle went around and around and around. I desperately wanted to be skinnier because I thought then I would get more approval, more attention, I would be liked more, I'd be accepted by the popular kids more. I didn't want to feel so alone, you know, and this made good sense to me at the time, and I say it with the hindsight of an adult, I didn't really understand the depths of what I was experiencing at the time. So I get myself into this position, trying and failing at diets, where food has not only become my primary friend, you know, something to rely on, something that makes me feel good, but it's also become my primary fear as well. And I'm stuck, and the obsession is growing. The focus is growing. With every weight loss attempt, my self-esteem erodes more and the importance of controlling my weight goes up in an attempt to bolster up my self-esteem and to get the things that I'm looking for. And around and around and around this went. And it started sucking in other things from my life. It became less important to me to do things, to see friends, to work on my schoolwork, to, you know, have hobbies. None of these things really mattered now in comparison to food and weight loss. If I could just get a handle on my food and my comfort eating, I would have everything I ever wanted, I thought. And as my life started to shrink around this, slowly but surely, the importance of controlling these things went through the roof. It is incredibly hard to be in the moment and experience joy and have fun when we're in our minds so much, being anxious around our weight and around food. It is incredibly hard. 
It is incredibly hard to experience joy and have fun when our self-esteem is so low and our mood is just generally so low. Now I convinced myself that I was happy, but I wasn't. Now I experience so much joy, I have so much excitement for life, and yes, I enjoy eating, but it's far from the only way that I know how to have fun. So what changed? And how can it change for you? Well, it all changed for me when I hit rock bottom. I was, I'd gone through dieting attempt after dieting, disordered eating, just over and over and over again through these cycles for so many years, and eventually I just thought, enough. I can't do this anymore. I just don't have the energy for it. And besides, it's not working. My weight really was kind of going like this, but it was also going up. And I just thought, I just can't. I can't do it anymore. So I decided, look, if I'm going to hate my body, at least I'm going to eat. At least I'm not going to go hungry. At least I'm going to stop restricting. And I'll just accept the fact that I'm an emotional eater. And I probably won't like my body for the rest of my life. And then everything changed. What do you think happened when I stopped trying to lose weight? Terrifying idea to me. It, it was so important to me, so you can imagine the place that I had to get to in order to give that up. But what do you think happened? I think I was thinking about food as much, analyzing it, monitoring it, controlling it, judging myself for it, feeling guilty. No, that went away really quite quickly, actually. And suddenly it was like I had this mental space. And no, I wasn't happy in my body, all right? But I kind of put that to one side. I had this mental space where I could actually experience things. I was in the moment, I wasn't in my head anymore. But I was forced into this position where my self-esteem was not good, right? And I wasn't happy. The mental space cleared up, but these things still persisted. And normally my go-to was, well, I'm gonna try and lose weight, that's gonna make me feel better. But now that wasn't really an option for me. So it made me ask the question, well, what can I do to be happier, right? And to grow my self-esteem. What do I need? I asked the question, what do I need in order to be happier and to feel better about myself? What things can I do? besides trying to control my weight. And I started with something that I'd always wanted but felt like I couldn't have. Real friendships. How can I get real friendships? Where I love them and they love me. And it was hard, but I learned how to get that need met. And do you know what happened to the amount that I was using food outside of feeling hungry? It went down. So we have this narrative sometimes when we have disordered eating that it's about the food, that it's about our weight. It isn't, I mean, it is in part that those are the symptoms, that's how it presents, but it's not what it's actually about. It's not what we're looking for, really. I talked about all of our needs in this video. And if we are using weight control and food to meet these needs, we're gonna be thinking about food all the time. It's gonna be on our mind constantly. Therefore, we don't have the mental space to experience fun and joy. Does that make sense? If we can start building up having these needs met, if then the importance of food and weight control starts to go down, now all of a sudden we've got the mental space where we can be in the moment and we can experience life. That's one part of it. And then there's the self-esteem. We've got to build that self-esteem up, that real deep inner sense of self-esteem, not the, the, the superficial sense of self-esteem that comes from, hey, I stuck to all my diet rules today. Hey, I lost weight today. When we can feel genuinely confident and excited and happy in who we are, you bet now it's a lot easier to have fun and experience joy in other areas of life. Absolutely it is. I'm not gonna repeat myself in this video because I've discussed needs and I've discussed getting a deep sense of self-esteem in these other videos. But if we can do that, and we can, you can, we build up our happiness and we remove the mental clutter and all of a sudden, life just becomes so much more beautiful and we can, we can all do this. And we don't even then need to stop ourselves from emotional eating, comfort eating because it will decline as a natural side effect of these things. Does that make sense? And then I wanna leave you with, this is really important. Doing things that we know, that the science shows us, boost up 
our mood. And I know you think, oh, this is so tedious, but this, these things work. If we get outside and see sunshine, if we move our bodies in a way that's enjoyable, if we fuel ourselves and we honor hunger, and we eat relatively nutritious food as well. If we change our inner narrative over time to be a positive one, I'm gonna make another video talking about this. Sorry to just skim over it. Change our inner narrative to be encouraging and supportive and inspirational. If we get good sleep, we get adequate rest, we do stress management, we allow ourselves to relax and get the rest that we need. If we build up our communication skills and our assertiveness skills, set clear boundaries and our relationships, the depth of our relationships increases. We can just feel happier. Now I know it's tempting, or maybe it has been tempting, to just see, I emotionally eat. I eat for fun, that's the problem. I've got to stop doing that. I'm gonna use willpower to stop doing that. It doesn't work like that, but it works like this. And you won't think about eating to have fun. You won't think about needing to restrict to have fun. And all of a sudden, not only are you so much happier and more fulfilled in life, but now you're a balanced eater. You don't think about food all the time. I'll direct you to those other videos, but we'll talk more about this. But yes, you can have fun without food. Just go let it snowball, be patient, compassionate. We can absolutely all get there and probably faster than you think. All right, thank you so much for watching guys. I hope this helped. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.